Hey, what's going on guys? I'm Primal Liquid and in this video I'm going to show you guys the easiest way to get S ranks in any mission when playing solo. Now, as soon as you actually load into the area, the first thing that you want to do is actually just run straight through to the extraction point. Uh, the main reason for that is you actually want to unlock the map as soon as possible, because then you also know where zombies are going to be coming from. However, if you actually cross paths with any zombies on the way, or any of this Cuban energy, I recommend either killing the zombie and getting the Cuban energy, simply due to the fact we're going to need a minimum of 5,000 before the first wave of Appears. Okay, so once you actually get into the main area, you want to actually summon the extractor in. That way, okay, so as you can see, we've got the map and we know exactly which directions they're going to be coming from. As well as that, we can also see uh, a few little close by stragglers here. So let's just get rid of these. Okay, so once you've actually cleared out the area of any uh, zombie stragglers that might be in here, it's time to uh, set a few traps. And so what I suggest doing is opening up the map and looking at where the zombies are going to be spawning from. So can you see here how there's three spawn points? However, they're all going to walk along this one red line. And so what we're going to do is we're going to make sure they don't get very far from that spawn point using both turrets and traps to get rid of them. Now, typically, uh, I would also have grenade turrets, however, I unfortunately ran out of parts, so I couldn't craft any for this mission. That is also one really important thing to note, however, you should always, when wanting to S-rank a mission, you should always go into that mission with everything already made. That way, you know, it's like you're not going to run out uh, and have to gather all the materials and then only end up getting like one or two. So... As you can see, I've placed my three turrets here with a fence in front of them. What that means is the zombies are going to be hitting the fences, but my turrets can still shoot through them. So it's just giving my turrets a little extra lifespan. And I'm also going to do the same a few times, basically keeping the zombies away from my turrets for as long as possible. Now, not only that, so as you can see, we're past the uh, line basically. However, there's also a spawn point over here, which means the zombies can come that way. So what we uh, what we actually want to do is we want to trickle them in. So I'm also going to place a few on the side. That way, when the zombies run over, they'll start attacking this fence here, which means my turrets can also get them. And we're going to do the same for this side as well. However... That's not the end of it. So what we're also going to do is we're going to throw down a couple of air cannons. And this is just going to give the uh, metal barricades a little bit of a longer span. And then finally, uh, we'll just throw one here as well. This way uh, they'll get knocked back into the uh, actual range of the turrets. So with that out of the way, we're going to go back to the uh, main area. However, if you can and you do have the chance, I do suggest just uh, grabbing these uh, side missions. I mean, it's not really that important if you don't. It just gives you a few extra materials to work with in worst case scenario. So, as you can see, we've got 54, well, 53 seconds left on the timer until the digging starts automatically. That gives us a little bit of time to actually defend the main base. So, let's get rid of this straggler. Okay, now, as I mentioned in my best loadout video, this is where the ramps come in really, really handy. So, because the zombies are going to filter in this way, now, obviously, we don't want to place them in the red line. So, we can actually place them just here. We'll place a ramp there and a ramp here. Now, the reason for this is the zombies are going to walk up these ramps because they can't get in any other way. And they're actually going to fall down here and end up proned out, giving me enough time to just use my bow and arrow on them. And then all my arrows are going to be located here, meaning I can collect them all extremely quickly. Okay. So now that the timer is going to start running out and the digging is going to start automatically, the best way of doing this is actually place your wormhole generator right next to it. Now, just a quick note, any zombies in the vicinity when the digging starts will actually go and attack the generator. So you want to actually make sure you know you actually kill all the zombies in that area. So the digging has started, so what we want to do is we want to spend 5,000 Cuban to speed up the digging. And that's why it's important that you get the Cuban before actually starting the game. Uh, sorry, before actually starting the wave. 
Now, when the wave's actually running, if you go and do the side missions, because the ones that spawn after the wave starts actually also carry Iris energy, which is going to give you an easier time of getting your uh, S rank. Now, the more Iris energy you collect from the side missions, the less times you actually have to boost it. Oh, got a few tagalongs there. Okay, so we'll do one more speed up. Right, so as you can see, these two side missions weren't there originally. They only actually appeared when uh, the wave started, which means there's going to be some iris energy near these uh, care packages like this one here. That's 5,000. And then we'll get the uh, side mission. And then we'll just run back and uh, take out the zombies that are there. Because if a zombie actually hits the uh, digger while it's actually digging, it's actually going to slow down and you're going to lose your speed boost. Meaning you've basically just lost 5,000 Cuban energy. However, it's not the end of the day, you know what I mean? With your turrets actually uh, quote unquote spawn camping the uh, zombie spawns, you know, it's like you're not really going to have too much to worry about when it comes to Cuban energy. Now you see, all these ones that are coming through the sides that don't actually have the red lines are actually the zombies that uh, were just around the outskirts of the map that we didn't actually kill before. So if you actually uh, want to go around the map killing all the zombies, then you're going to have a much easier time with this than I currently have. Uh, it was just me being generally lazy. Okay, so that's all the uh, close by... Oh wait, no, there's one more. Okay, so that's all the close by zombies, meaning we can actually get the last care package and the last bit of virus energy. Now, one thing I do want to note is any side missions during a wave will disappear at the end of that wave. So, for example, the two side missions we just grabbed will actually disappear at the end of this uh, wave, meaning you're going to lose out on Iris energy and you're also going to lose out on, uh, well, the materials in them. So, you could end up missing out on uh, some quite good stuff. But, as you can see, with those uh, bits of iris energy that I just grabbed, that was a free uh, 10,000 iris energy. Which is almost equivalent of a full boost on the uh, extractor. So, it's definitely, definitely extremely helpful. However, it's not needed on easy mode. On easy mode, you can actually just uh, keep boosting the digger and you won't have a problem uh, reaching S rank. Now, again, it's the same for normal mode. You don't need any iris energy. It just makes it easier. You can completely uh, get an S rank just by boosting. However, when it comes to hard missions, you do need iris energy. Oh, excuse me. You see, even if you actually boost the digger uh, throughout an entire hard mission, so as soon as the boost wears off, you boost it again. Even if you do that, you will not get enough energy to actually get an S rank. For example, on the daily missions on the beta currently, to get an S rank, you need 400,000 uh, total extracted energy. However, if you actually keep the booster going permanently throughout the entire run, you're only going to actually end up with about 380,000. So you're about 20,000 short, meaning you need to actually get four Iris Energy Balls. Now, as you saw at the uh, in the last wave, I had one ball on each side mission. However, in later waves, you can get more than one, but it is a bit random. You could end up with one on wave three, or you could end up with two in wave two. You know, I mean, it's just completely random. Now, as I said previously, again though, the side missions in the middle of waves do not have any uh, iris energy with them. The only ones that contain iris energy are the ones that spawn in the wave itself. But now, as you keep going along, uh, obviously I lost my ramps uh, because, uh, you know, it's like the wave expanded because they were in the red zone. So, you know, nothing I can really do about that. However, one thing I am going to do is I'm going to place one... Oh, wait, no, I can't place the ramps there. So we'll place a couple of fences there. Because this way, when they spawn up here, they're not going to get straight into it. And then I will also place another set of uh, barricades here. This gives me double line protection. And because they're... Well, because they've got a bit of a distance between them, it means that uh, bombers aren't actually going to uh, destroy them. 
aside from that, I'm also going to place some uh, shock traps here. Oh, it's not going to let me place that one there. Okay, so we'll just place that one there. Uh, we'll just place them here. Now, unfortunately, this is uh, the problem with this bridge. You know, you can't always get the actual traps placed down. Okay, and because this side was missing one, we'll just throw a couple more down. Throw a couple along here as well, just for a little uh, added protection for when I go running around for the iris energy. And then we'll throw away a uh, ramp here as well. So what we're going to do with this ramp is we're going to place them in such a way that the zombies only really have an option of going up the ramps. And then we'll throw uh, a little barricade down here as well to try and protect the ramps themselves. Okay, so now when zombies go up this ramp, so they're going to fall down straight onto uh, that shock trap. And then there's another shock trap there. Right, so now in wave 2, we're just going to wait for the actual side missions to pop up. Because you see up here, these three spawns. You know, I've still got all my turrets up there, which are doing pretty much all the killing for me. And that's what's earning me all my cube and energy down at the bottom right there. Although one thing I did actually forget to do there was uh, boost it. But again, on easy and normal, you know, it's not the end of the world if you forget to do that. Okay, so the side missions have just spawned in. So we'll quickly kill those guys, and then we'll just make a run for it. However, what I do suggest doing is just equipping your uh, wormhole generator. That way, when you've actually got the uh, side missions done, you can just teleport straight back. Or if the zombies start attacking your uh, extractor, again, you can just teleport straight back. Okay, so like I said in the last round, uh, you can get more than one ball in a wave. And just like that, you know, that's an extra 10,000 energy, which is straight up an extra boost, basically. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to return back to the extractor. And I'm going to actually use another boost. Just clear out uh, any zombies that are here. Okay, and there's a bomber there, so we'll just shoot him uh, a couple times in the feet to get rid of him. Oh, and another one here. Unfortunately, they're ignoring that ramp I placed. Nothing uh, you can really do about that. Unfortunately, it's an odd situation. What I should have done is actually place the ramp uh, just here, and then a trap in front of him there. Oh, that's fine. Something I should have uh, sorted before the game actually started. Okay, so because there's a group here, we're just going to use the flame arrow on them. Set the uh, ground on fire as well to slow them down a bit more. Okay, now we're going to take out this uh, last side mission for some extra iris energy. Now, again, you can see down at the bottom, I'm basically almost at an S rank already, and we're only halfway through wave 2. Now, obviously, that is mainly because of the fact that I've been grabbing the iris energy balls as well, so that's given me quite a large boost. Was there another one here that I saw? Uh, no, no. So, yeah, see, so there's only one with uh, this care package. I mean, you know, unfortunately, it's uh, it's luck of the draw, you know. Sometimes you get two, sometimes you get one. Uh, I have seen three pop up, but I've only actually seen that on hard missions. So now that we've got the Iris NG, again, just warp straight back to the extractor. Kill any nearby zombies. Or just let the extractor do it. And then just do a boost. However, because I actually have quite a lot of Cuban energy, I'm just going to get an ammo resupply just for, you know, safety and ease. Then we'll just get rid of these or slow them down a bit with some arrows while I get the ammo. Okay, now that I've got the ammo, it's uh, now it's basically just hunting season. And once you've uh, actually done the side missions, the easiest thing to do is just sit back, you know, sit in the spawn, boost in the extractor when it runs uh, out, and just uh, generally killing any zombies that appear. Uh, and then, again, again, it's the same in Wave 3, you know, it's like, once the round sports, go get your uh, side missions done, get the Iris energy, teleport back, and then just go to town on any zombies that appear. And that's pretty much how you get S rank on any difficulty. Okay, so Wave 3, uh, this is actually what I should have done with the ramps previously, is I should have actually placed them like this, so that the zombies actually end up walking over them, and not just going next to them and twatting them there. What I'm also going to do is, I'm actually going to use the last of my barricades now, just to give my, well, just to make life easier in the last wave. 
that way you know it's like I can run around get stuff that I need and you know it's like just not really have to worry the reason I'm placing them spaced out is again because of bombers it's like we don't want a bomber exploding and taking absolutely everything with it now we've got two minutes left However, there was a uh, walker gear spawned in, which is obviously, you know, it's going to be uh, helpful. So, we're going to go and grab that. Now, let's see. Uh, which one is it? Okay, so this one up here there is C4. Don't really care about C4. Don't really care about the materials. Any, so there's going to be no iris energy there. So, I'm just going to leave that as is. And I'm just going to go get the walker gear instead. Okay, so now that I've brought the walker gear back, I've got 50 seconds left on the clock. Which means if I wanted to, I could go and get the second walker gear and bring it here. Just in case the first one either runs out of ammo or gets destroyed. But I'm not going to do that because, personally, I don't really see the need to do that. What I am going to do, however, is just, you know, fortify my defences a little here. <laughs> Ooh, terrible art being today. Right. So that's an extra ramp there, and then we're just going to block off this side with two fences. Uh, simply due to the fact, you know, I just don't really want anything coming in there for a while. I just want to shoot it while it's outside. And then, because uh, there's still fences there on that path, I'm not really going to worry about that. I'm just going to place a single trap there. Now, what have I got left to use? So, yeah, I'm completely out of traps now. So, if I wanted to, I could go and actually create more traps. However, I don't really see the need for that, so I'm just going to leave it. And I've still got my ammo there from the previous uh, wave. So right now I've got 301 assault rifle bullets. And I've still got another 390 waiting for me right there. That's basically 700 bullets to last this entire wave. So all I'm going to do now is I've got the walker gear for if I start getting overrun. But I'm basically just going to sit back and take everything out as it comes with uh, the assault rifle long range. Oh, and obviously as well as uh, boosting whenever it wears off. Now, I'm not entirely sure how many boosts are required exactly uh, to actually get uh, the S ranks on each different mode. And obviously, the more Iris energy you get in side missions is going to affect that as well. Uh, however, one thing to uh, just quickly note is each boost lasts 30 seconds. So that way you can quite easily time uh, how long the boosts are going to be and roughly when it's going to expire. That way, you know, you can always make sure you're back to it just in time. Okay, so I've got over 200,000 now for total iris extracted. That means on normal mode, it's a guaranteed S rank. So now I don't need to worry about boosting it anymore. And I don't really need to worry about going for more iris energy from the uh, side quest. So now it's just a case of making sure the actual digger survives. I mean, really I should have actually uh, stopped these when they were on the way to it. Well, unfortunately I wasn't really paying any attention to that other side of the map. Okay, so now that I'm running a little low on ammo, I'm going to make sure I use all this ammo before I actually pick up the second set of uh, ammo that I've got there. You know, just because, why waste, basically. Yeah, so you see that bomber took out uh, that line of defense, which, again, is something that you really should keep an eye on, uh, especially when going for an S rank, because, I mean, there's nothing worse than uh, doing a hard mission, getting all the points there for an S, and then uh, realizing that, you know, it's like you've got no way to defend it because all your stuff's gone. The zombies are in and they destroy the digger with 10 seconds left on the timer. And yes, unfortunately I am speaking from experience there. It's a colossal pain in the arse. Okay, so here a bomb is about to come up the ramp. And this is why I suggest placing ramps where the zombies can run up it. Because then they just fall over and then, you know, it's like you can just walk in and uh, kick them. The problem is, though, if bombers explode next to it, you're going to lose it. You know, there's no real way around that, unfortunately. It's just something uh, you've got to deal with. I mean, what you can do, I suppose, is, uh, you know, it's like not kill the bomber in that area. Wait for him to get up and move away. But in doing that, you know, it's like you might give them uh, a bit of time to, you know, just mess up. Or it might move a bit too close to the extractor. So, it is a little risky, but it's entirely down to uh, yourself. And there you have it guys, 
an easy S rank. Now, again, I mean, this can be done on any map, solo, on any difficulty. As long as you make sure to actually grab the Iris energy on hard mode missions, you're going to get S ranks every time. Again, you don't need the, the Iris energy on easy and normal modes. You can just actually boost the extractor on them to get the S rank. But there you go, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, then hit that like button, leave a comment, and let me know down below what your favorite thing is in Metal Gear Survive so far. But as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.